Hello and welcome back, and now we're going to look <coughs> this one here. Hello and welcome back to another 10 minute turn video from the Polyonic PC Wargamers. I'm using the John Tiller engine to have a look at uh, movement and how we can move our troops around and the pitfalls of certain types of movement with certain units. We're in campaign 1814, so we're in France now, and we're going to have a look at how to move some of these French troops around. Now, as with a lot of things in John Tiller, there is more than one way to do something. Um, and we're going to start with the very basics. So if I was to select these cuirassiers here, the very easiest way to move is to select a unit. Um, and we have these movement points. And anything we do is going to expend these movement points. Different units have different um, amount of movement points, whether they're disordered, Cavalry will have more than infantry, for example, and it will depend very much on the terrain we're trying to move um, and the condition and type of our troops. So the easiest way is to select a unit and simply right click on an adjacent hex and keep moving until our movement points have been used up. So there we got um, it's a 100 meter hex, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We moved 600 meters with that cavalry that wasn't disordered. They're in good order, so they had their full movement points. The next uh, type of movement, or way we can move these troops, is to double click them and select them. Um, and then we can hold down the left button whilst they're selected and then hover over um, a hex that we want to go to. I'm going to go right to the top of the screen here. They may not reach it. I've still got the left button uh, held down. And if I was to release it, there we go. They did their best to try and pathfind their way up there. They ran out of movement points before they actually got to the top of the screen. Um, you've got to be careful with that one because the pathfinding can be a little bit dodgy. If there was some terrain here and they went over it or through a village or something, they may become disordered. But certainly to move units quickly over open ground, it's a nice way to do it. Another way we can move, a third way we can move, is to select a unit, hold down the control key, keep it held down whilst that unit is selected, beg your pardon, the out key, not the control key, the out key, um, and then right click again, let's say at the top of the screen here, and the cavalry will use its points to try and reach that hex that we designate. So we've got the out key held down, I right click on that hex, and the cavalry does its best to actually go up to the top of the screen. Terrain does have a, uh, uh, a factor in using these movement points. Obviously, it's going to be harder to go through woods, and forests, and marshes, and fields, and things like that. And just to prove that to you, if we try and move, these are all the same units. Okay, these are different guard units, but they are infantry units. And I try to move this gun in open terrain. We can reach five hexes or four hexes. Same with the cavalry, so infantry, and the same with the cavalry. If I was to move these same units over these generic fields, they may look different, but a fields in the John Tiller games are sort of generic fields. Uh, a one hex covers all type field. And I tried to move this uh, artillery up. He's only gone two hexes in this case, so before we got the five hexes. The infantry, they managed three hexes rather than five. And the cavalry, the same. So I've got to be careful and, and realise that terrain has a, an effect on the way we can move our troops. Another factor con to consider is the formation that we're using to actually move our troops. Here we've got some infantry in column, we've got some infantry in line, and infantry in square as well. Now depending if you have certain optional rules uh, 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 in play, um, this will affect whether certain formations will actually disorder or go through a disorder check when they're moving. Now, in general, we try to move uh, our infantry in column. It gives us the best mobility. We get to use sort of less movement points for further distance we're moving, if you like. And the best way is to move our infantry around in column. In line, um, they only really travel short distances. You wouldn't march across the battlefield in line in general. And depending on the quality of the troop, whether there's a leader present and the terrain that's there, we can move around in line, but generally it uses more points, so we could only go um, two hexes in that case. We can also move in square formation, however that is very much um, only one hex, and we do, uh, we do run the risk of having a disorder check, particularly if we move into anything that isn't just a clear um, hex such as this. 
So we move these guys, they can move one square, use all our movement points up here. Um, and uh, as I said, just be careful as to the terrain that you're moving your troops in. We come up here as well and we can see two supply carts. Now supply carts are wheeled, wagons if you like, carts, and you've got to really try to make use of roads with these guys because they can travel quite a fair distance on roads but over land and certainly over um, obstructed terrain and things like that they really use their movement points quick and they don't move very far during the turn. So with this guy here you've got 16 movement points and if we were to move him along this nice road he covered a fair few hexes, it was a 5-6 hexes. Whereas the same unit with 16 movement points, if we were to move him across just the, the open grass, we'd probably only get two. Yeah, there we go, before his movement points um, have been used up. Now, we've still got four movement points in the bag, if you like, but that, that isn't enough to move one further hex onto uh, the same kind of terrain. Sometimes, okay, I thought we may be able to actually move him onto the road because it will take less movement points, but that wasn't the case um, at this time. Um, crossing bridges and things like that, we have a symbol for a ford and only certain units can actually go over a ford. That's uh, cavalry and uh, infantry. And we also have bridges to cross these big rivers as well. Bridges have a, a, a rating, if you like, or a strength rating. And not every unit can go over every type of bridge. In order for infantry to pass over a bridge, we need at least a strength of 50. For cavalry, we need 100, and for uh, uh, artillery, we need a strength of 150. So when you approach a bridge and you have a look at the bridge, you've got to make sure that the troops that you've got and want to cross with, um, the bridge is actually strong enough to take them. And we move just the same way we do with anything, and we go across the bridge, and there we go, up the road. Um, we said about terrain and uh, fields and things like that, that they have a marked effect on uh, units and how they move within those types of terrain. And we've got to look at towns and cities as well. Now, in general, if we are going around line formation, we said that we could suffer a disorder check, depending on which option rules that we have in force. But certainly, if we were to move in line formation, near 500 men, it's going to cause disorder. So once I move these guys in line into that hex, you can see we instantly get disordered and we'll have to go through that disorder check on the next turn. In general, that also applies to cavalry. If we're not, certainly if we're not using sort of the main roads to travel through the towns and cities, cavalry, there we go, they will also get disordered. If I was to use a ford, we use the ford exactly the same way as we use the bridge, as long as we have enough points to cross over. As you can see, we used our points when we actually got into the ford itself, but as long as we're using it and we're in column, we shouldn't get disordered. Even troops in column that are um, even troops in column that are within a town hex that aren't disordered, if we move them into another adjacent hex that also contains infantry, particularly if they're in line, we're definitely going to uh, suffer disorder. Everyone's going to get bunched up. It's going to be carnage. It's going to be chaos, and we will there we go suffer um, a disorder with penalty as well. There are ways. Um, uh, just have a look here as well. Going through forests and marshes and things like that, if we have a unit that's going through, chances are we're going to suffer this as well. We always try as much as possible, certainly when we're moving around and manoeuvring, to try and use roads and paths to our advantage, because open field we can move across without disordering. However, we use more movement points to cover less distance, whereas on roads um, uh, we can go a lot further using these points. <coughs> We also have a way of quickly moving large number of troops across the field and in particular roads. So here we've got five cavalry regiments with a leader, and I want to quickly move them up to this town here. If I select this leader, or any unit at the head of this column, doesn't matter what it is, um, it doesn't have to be a leader, just whatever unit is at the head of the column, I haven't selected them, all I've done is put my cursor over the lead unit. If I then select the ALT key, hold the ALT key down, very similar to the fast movement at the start of the video, and I hold the ALT key and I right click, all of those units uh, 
go uh, across the um, the road in nice orderly column. We haven't used all the movement points here, but never mind. If I then right click again, they move up one further until they use all of their movement points. That will depend very much on what your lead unit is. If it's a disordered unit or something that doesn't have a, a significant amount of movement points and behind there's lots of lovely cavalry that are undisordered, um, they will be limited by that first unit's movement points. They won't overtake that first unit and carry on unless we physically select them. So we may have enough points here to do that. There we go. Um, but you physically uh, and manually have to do that yourself. Another means, we've got these old guard here, they're all bunched up on the road, it's a little bit unrealistic, usually they'd be strung out on the march rather than all bunch up into one road hex. What we can do is select again that first unit, or not select them, just uh, highlight the um, hex that they are in, um, or let's use these guys and go backwards, so highlight that hex that they're in without selecting the unit, go down here somewhere and hold down the ALT key right click and you can see they separate themselves out into one uh, unit per hex and they're now on the march on the road. So that's hopefully the basics of movement and crossing the likely terrain uh, you're going to expect and what can happen while you get disordered. Um, and as, as I say, big tip is to try and use roads and pathways as much as possible to try and avoid any, uh, avoid any disorderment. Disorderment gives you a penalty in attack and defense and you need to go through a dice roll at the start of the turn to check. So hopefully you've got your leaders there um, that may expedite that process and give you a higher chance. One word on leader movement. Leaders, they do have a, uh, a point a limit, a movement point limit, but it exceeds that of any other type of unit. That doesn't mean you can use them for scouts going behind enemy units and checking the flanks and things like that, because we need our leaders uh, to lead where they are. But if we notice here, we've got Napoleon, and ordinary cavalry would perhaps go five, six hexes somewhere up here. But with Napoleon, if I was to go right up here, we'll see how far he gets. Oh, he does. He almost gets right up there. So that's about ten hexes or something like that. That's just so they can roam around the battlefield and give leadership and orders, if you like, where it's needed. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. hope it helped those that are new to the series. Um, be sure to check out the other bright sized videos, the 10 minute turn videos on infantry and cavalry and command um, and artillery. And happy gaming!